Hi, Russ of Aquarimex here. About five months ago, I decided to see if I could produce an orange dairy cow morph of Porcelio Levis. And today's video is an update on that project. First, let's talk about some background. Several years ago, Ryan Orr crossed orange Porcelio scabber with Dalmatian Porcelio scabber. Now, the first generation of the cross was mostly wild types with a few calicos. But when he crossed those wild types, what he got was an assortment of wild types, oranges, Dalmatians, and some orange Dalmatians. And that's how the morph was created. And I decided to replicate his experiment. So this was, again, quite a few years ago. So I took some very young uh, Spanish orange and some very young Dalmatian. The reason why I wanted to use young ones is because, as you may know, most isopods are capable of mating when they're very, very young, and they're also capable of storing sperm, and that several broods after one mating can result from that initial mating. So I didn't want Dalmatians that were old enough to have already mated with Dalmatians, and oranges that were already old enough to mate with oranges. So, put the young ones together, and I got essentially the same results that Ryan Orr did. I had mostly wild types with a few calicos that came in the uh, first generation resulting from that cross and then crossing those those wild types together I ended up with the same assortment and a few of them were orange Dalmatians so I produced some of my own orange Dalmatians that way and then later I purchased some from Ryan Orr's line to basically deepen the gene pool and the ones that you see here are descendants of both lines. So it was really straightforward with Porcelio scabra. It took some time, but it was very easy as the orange trait and the Dalmatian trait are both single gene recessive traits. And so the results were fairly predictable. So I started to think, well, Porcelio labus, why hasn't anyone crossed dairy cows with orange labus? I did a little research online, couldn't find anything about it at all. So I decided to try it. I took 16 very young Porcelio Levis orange and 16 very young Porcelio Levis dairy cow. And I put them together and I made a video about the beginning of the experiment. Well, shortly after I posted this video, several people responded saying that they had heard that it was not possible to cross Porcelio Levis orange with Porcelio Levis dairy cow. I thought this was really interesting. Um, one of the hypotheses out there was that they had diverged enough that the two morphs had differently shaped reproductive organs and could no longer mate. And I noted in my colony that uh, whether or not this was true, it did not stop them from trying. But it was interesting information nonetheless. So now let's take a look at my results so far. Now if it was a simple matter of single gene recessive traits for both Dalmatian and orange, and assuming that they were able to interbreed, what I would expect to see would be some wild type individuals, just like I did with the Porcelio Scaber cross. However, that is not what I'm seeing. As you can see here, there are quite a few offspring in the enclosure. Some of them are dairy cows, some of them are oranges, but there are no wild types as far as I can tell. So there's more than one possible explanation for what's going on here. One possibility is that despite the young age at which I introduced the orange and the dairy cows to this culture, they were simply old enough to mate, and so all of the offspring in here so far result from matings between dairy cows and dairy cows and oranges and oranges, and that eventually, if I let the culture go long enough, we'll get a Dalmatian to cross with an orange, and we'll get some wild types. It's also possible that this is further evidence that Porcelio Levis orange and Porcelio Levis dairy cow are not capable of mating and producing offspring. Honestly though, I'm beginning to question how closely these two morphs are related. In some senses, they don't even seem to act like the same species. Dairy cows get to a larger maximum size. They are much more active during the day and they seem to be much more prolific than the orange labus. In fact, I've noticed, even though I started with equal numbers of both morphs in this enclosure, that the dairy cows 
far outnumber the oranges. Both are reproducing, but the dairy cows are, seem to be much more prolific. And I'm not the only one who has observed these differences between dairy cows and oranges in this species. I'd like to make some suggestions for further research. For one, I'm going to continue this experiment. There's always a little variation in populations, right? There are going to be individuals in this population that vary a little bit. So it's conceivable that eventually, if it is an issue with different shapes of reproductive organs between the two morphs, eventually there may be some that will be compatible. And I would also like to suggest that any of you that are interested in doing so could also replicate this experiment. The more data we have, the closer we are going to come to understanding what's going on here one way or the other. I also think it would be fascinating to do some genetic analysis. So if anyone is interested in finding out a little bit more about when these two morphs diverged from one another, or how recently their ancestors were capable of reproduction, were they actually isolated from the same species? Is, has there been a misidentification of one of the species here at some point? It would be really interesting to find out more about that. I also think it would be really fascinating to try to cross both dairy cow and orange back to the wild type Porcelia levis. That could certainly shed some light on the situation. Are, is one of the morphs incapable, or are both of the morphs incapable of reproducing with the original wild type? Uh, if they are, that would give us some information. And if they're not, then maybe the crosses could be crossed back to the other morphs and maybe that would be an avenue to success. Who knows? I'd like to take a second to give a shout out to our Patreon backers. I really appreciate all that you do for the channel and really excited about what we can do in the future. If you're interested in becoming part of the Aquarimax Pets Patreon family, I'll put a link at the end of the video. So there you have it. So far, I haven't produced any orange dairy cows, nor have I produced any double het wild types. So we'll see what happens in the future. And maybe thanks to the uh, research that you may contribute to, we'll learn more about this project. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss anything.